podcast. My name is Lisa and I am Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry and I welcome you to my home. I live in Marblehead, Massachusetts which is a little harbor town uh, just north of Boston and we live in a very very old house. We're very lucky to, to, um, to live here. Um, this house was built as a warehouse in 1750 and then it was uh, converted into a residence in 1801. I actually went out and looked at the little sign today. If I remember, I'll pot take a picture and put the picture of the, the sign. Each of the old houses in um, down here in what's called Old Town Marblehead has a sign that tells you when it was um, originally built. So that's really, really a cool thing here. Um, so I live right on the harbor. I can see it a little bit from uh, from our windows here. Sophia upstairs can see a little bit more of it, but we do live um, right here on um, on the water in Marblehead, and we are very lucky. And I welcome you here to um, to my home for uh, for a little while today. So we'll do a couple things today. I have some finished ob objects to show you. I have some works in progress. I'm going to talk about a podcast that I have really been enjoying, and um, and then we'll do some chatter at the end. So let's get started. I have about five, I think, to show you today, so that's pretty exciting. The, um, the first one that I'm going to show you, which I'm holding right here, is a beautiful pair of socks. And these are called the uh, Smoky Cable Socks, and they are designed by Julia of the Happy Knitting Podcast. Um, she has a great podcast. She is just so much fun, and she's, so, um, she's always just very happy <laughs> when she's recording her podcast. Julia is originally from Germany, I believe, and she and her husband just recently... Um, within the last several months or so, moved to the UK. I think he had a job that uh, opportunity that came up there, so they moved to the UK. They also have a newborn, a fairly uh, fairly newborn um, baby as well. Uh, so she is starting to do some baby knits uh, as well. But she designed this beautiful, recently designed this beautiful pair of socks, and you can see that it has this lovely cable right up the front, and then uh, then some of the cables along the side. And these are separated just by some easy purl stitches. This pattern, I believe, is written top down, cuff down, but if you know me, you know that I like to knit my socks from the toe up, um, which you can do easily with any pattern um, of socks that you choose. So I start at the toe and then I just knit up and I always do a fish slips kiss heel, which is a short row heel because it fits me really well and I know that um, that I, I just like I like the way that 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 feels and then I just end up with the with the cuff at the top and these are beautiful I have, do have two of them I did finish them <laughs> and this these are knit out of uh, knit picks uh, sock yarn so I know that they're going to be very very durable um, Julia has very generously offered to uh, give me a pattern to give away uh, on the on the podcast so if you are a sock knitter <laughs> like me and you would like to possibly win this pattern the smoky cable socks then make a comment down below and just tell me why you like knitting socks and um, we'll do a, do a giveaway um, the next time the next time around I'm just going to do this on YouTube uh, just because I'm, I am aware that um, I usually do things over on Ravelry but I know the issues with Ravelry right now it, they are not bothering me but I know that there are a lot of people that um, that really can't use Ravelry and I'm going to try not to um, show any pictures I think most of the pictures that I have I'm not going to be showing you anything on here from that's on the <clears throat> directly from the Ravelry site but I do, do just want to make you aware that any of the links that I have and uh, down below will probably be to Ravelry pages um, until I'm able to 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 see if I can find some other links for uh, for patterns and, and pictures but I just want to make you aware of that but anyway if you are interested in receiving this pair of this uh, the pattern for this pair of socks just leave me a comment below and we will um, we'll make that um, we'll make that draw on the next podcast episode so very excited about these. These are going to be really a really nice um, spring pair of socks, and doing them with the um, just the single color really lets those cables just pop out. They're just very beautiful. So finished object number one. Finished object number two again is very is also very uh, very fun. And I have I think I mentioned the last time I've been watching a tiny desk knitting podcast with Emma Barnaby. And she is just a Fair Isle knitter. She just loves to knit Fair Isle projects, and that is what she's doing. And she does a great in-depth description of each of the pieces that she's doing. And she's really very, uh, very inspirational as far as uh, Fair Isle knitting is concerned. And once I started watching her, and I was like, you know, I, I need to get back to some Fair Isle. I haven't done any in a while. 
And I had the pattern of the Katie's cap. I think that was in the Shetland Wool Week journal. So I have that, and I decided to to pull that to pull that out. And the nice thing about Katie's cap, it's a hat, and you can really do it in any colors at all. And I just chose some. I actually used the colors that I'm using in the Kufel, which I'll show you in a bit, by Kate Davies. And then I have some black uh, knit picks. If this is all this color work is all knit picks palette because that's just what I happen to have in my um, in my in my stash. Um, most of the Fair Isle knitting, you know, you can do this with um, actual Shetland wool, which makes it it's a little crunchier and it makes it um, it make, makes it stickier, so it's a little bit easier um, to to do the color work. Uh, your your stitches aren't quite sliding quite as much, but that was fine. I've had a lot of experience doing this, and I do like to use the the knit picks, and so this worked really well for me. But um, uh, but here it is. So here's the Katie's cap, and it's beautiful. I love the star motif at the top. And then it just has all these colors. So you can see the background color that I used all the way through was the black. And then I've just used all of the, the, the different colors. I think it's one, two, three. There's four, maybe five colors in here. But again, you know, with True Fair Isle, you're only knitting two colors on any one, any one row. So it's really not too difficult to do. But it's also very addictive because as you're knitting through it, you can see... You know, all right, I'm just going to do a couple more rows because I want to get to the red. <laughs> and I'm going to do a couple more rows because I want to get to that blue color and see what that looks like. But they're super, it's just super cute. And if you take a look at this look at this pattern, or you happen to have the the, um, the Shetland Wool Week journal, there are just so many different combinations of colors that you can use. So you could make a hundred of these and no two of them would be would be the same. So this is just perfect. So this I use, this is a great, springtime hat or early fall hat so this is a great hat I have not I didn't even block this yet I just I took it off the needles and I just threw it on my head and, and started you started using it and you can see the, the inside with the color work with the floats and this the this again this is a trick I've, I got from um, Kate Davies that she basically says anytime you're doing you're using yarn that that is um you know, for, for Fair Isle, you basically can just knot these and just leave them here. And you can see that. That's really all I've done. I haven't woven them in the side. And what happens, even though this is a knit picks, it is a little bit slippery. It is still wool. So it just kind of felts into itself. Let's see if you can see it. So these ends are not going anywhere. So I basically just knot them and trim them and start wearing them. And they're just fine. Not a problem whatsoever. And they will never come apart. And the more I wear it, the more they'll kind of felt down. Uh, and you wouldn't even notice. The only reason I actually <laughs> do this is that that's where I know the that's what I where I know the back of the the back of the hat is because when I go to put it on I can feel it. I can't see where the back is, but I can feel it on the inside a little bit. So that's how I know to put put this on. But this is a really great pattern, and it's really it's a fun introduction to Fair Isle if you haven't done it before. These are really nice because you're doing it in the round. You know, there's no steaking <laughs> on this, and uh, yeah, I really I, I really like this. I would um, I'm probably will make more of these because it's a really cute a really cute pattern and I'm really really happy with with that the third finished object I think I showed this to you as a work in progress the last time and this is called Rocky Cliffs and it is by Greta Merson and it is out of some hand spun that I did and this is a cowl so it's kind of chunky so it's a cowl with lots of cables in it and I'm really happy with the way that the hand spun. Oh, sorry, the cat's on the, on the bed knocking some things around. Um, but I'm really happy the way the hand spun kind of striped out like that. It's really pretty. So super warm. This is very very soft. It's merino, so it's very very soft. And when I uh, this is I plied this is I think I, actually this is a three ply. That's what I did with this. So that's why it's really super thick and a little bit more on the bulky side but super pretty and I am very very happy with this this is going to be a definitely be a go-to next next winter when we're back in the office <laughs> alrighty and let's see what oh of course this is my the sea change which I actually finished so this is the sea change by Jennifer Steingass I'm super happy with the way this came out and um, if you remember from the last time, I had some issues because when I was doing the chart, I did the chart correctly down here at the bottom. You can see the, the patterning here. 
But then when I got up to here, I switched it around and I was doing the dark and the light the wrong way. I had to rip it back. Um, but it all came right in the end. <laughs> And I actually really like this pattern because it tells you to put a little pop of color right at the top, which is great. I think that's really super, and it just makes it, I think it really pulls that pulls it together and makes it um, even more elegant than it, would, than it would be. This will not be an elegant sweater for me. This will just be a really, this is going to be like an outdoor sweater for next winter. I actually, I think I had talked about this a little bit too, I actually fold this a little bit. And what that means is that I actually, I put it in our washer. We have a... A wool setting on our washing machine so I put it on that wool setting so that meant that it was it it was delicate but still wool setting so basically what happened is that I washed it and there's a little bit of agitation and so it 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 fulls it doesn't felt it completely but it's the start of felting so it really it makes the um, it makes the fabric a little bit stiffer a little bit thicker so you can't see the um, you can't see as much distinction on the stitches as you could have had I not done that. And basically what that does is make this, it pulls all the stitches together and it makes it a very, 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 very warm, warm sweater. And it even makes it even more waterproof. I mean, if you poured water on this right now, it would just, it would really just slide, um, slide right off. So this is going to be a great sweater for next winter for going outside. So I'll be able to just throw in a turtleneck, put this on on some days, and not have to put a jacket on because it's that it's that warm. And I'm really happy with um, I'm really happy with this pattern. I think if you remember <clears throat> this pattern, I had said this talked about this before. This is it start it's bottom up, and some of Jennifer Steingast's patterns she has you actually start here, and work up. And so that you have the, um, so that you already have the, the yoke done and then basically you, you've cast on provisional stitches and then you just cast those off and you just, then you just work down. I, <clears throat> I liked that process better on some of the other sweaters that I've done by her. So I think that if I, if I do, when, I should say, yeah, if I should say when I do another one of these yoke sweaters, I'm probably going to, <clears throat> excuse me, go ahead and do that with, uh, with it and start, start here and then work up and then work down again. <clears throat> and I, I just feel that that would be easier, especially with, this is, I used worsted weight yarn on this project. So as I was going up, it was, got heavy. It was very, very heavy. Working it, working it, um, just heavy on my lap, uh, which you know was was winter time, so that was that was fine too. But it just got heavy and kind of I had to move it around uh, a lot, and <clears throat> I realized that when you do it the other way, you don't have that because you have mostly this, and then you're not really you're not you are just doing stockinette going down, so it's still heavy, but it's not uh, it, you're not trying to manipulate the stitches with the with the different colors up at the top and doing doing the color work, so. I will probably try that um, that technique the next time I do uh, do one of these yoke sweaters. But I'm very very happy with the way it came out. I'm glad that I I did that fulling. I really wanted that with this one. So this will be a great great sweater to go out and take um, take walks in uh, next next winter. So excellent. I'm really happy with that. Really really nice. Uh, and then the last finished object I'm actually wearing. This was very. This is very very unusual for me. So this is called the Felix Pullover, and it is by uh, by um, Savory Knitting, <clears throat> and this is done out of uh, my hand spun. This hand spun is. Um, I don't even remember where I got it. I've had it for so I've had it for so long, and it's really this burgundy color. And what I did was with this, I did the hand spun and then I applied it with some really uh, burgundy uh, lace weight, which I'm actually going to show you later because I'm using it again. And so it, you know, it came out to be a kind of a, um, I would say a light worsted, um, maybe even to DK. And so I, and I, I have used this yarn over and over again. I've done, I even forget, I've tried one thing with it and it didn't really look very good and I think that was just in um, garter stitch and I wasn't really happy with that project I took it out started something else <clears throat> wasn't happy with that and I just I had a lot of this because I had single plied it so I, I mean I had just taken the um, taken the fiber and I um, I had just spun it all out so I had uh, I had two or three bobbins worth of singles and then I just plied it with this this with the lace weight so I had a lot of this and I'm like you know what 
I'm just going to rip it out again <laughs> and I'm going to try something different. I've never made a sweater out of my hand spun. I didn't know if I would have enough, but this looked like a really great uh, great pattern and it was it was knit on big enough needles so that I knew that I would I probably would have uh, have probably have enough so it's really it came out beautifully it's really pretty it has this nice lace detail on the um, on the shoulder pieces and you don't even see this I showed this to Sophia she's like I didn't know that there were those lace details I'm like yeah that's the kind of thing you don't see until you actually put you know, put the sweater on but I'm really happy with it you, you know I, I think it's meant to be a cropped sweater I let it I, I made it a little bit longer I'm, I'm not a big fan of the cropped sweaters but I did the three-quarter length sleeves I really like those those are going to be nice for the spring so this is going to be a perfect go back to the office um, little uh, little top to 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 throw on and I'm and I'm just kind of like really chuffed that I use actually use my hand spun for uh, for uh, for a sweater. It was really just, it was like, I'm just going to try this. Let me just throw this on. And it, because it's knit on larger needles, it didn't take very long either. <laughs> I mean, it literally, I, th I think I was probably done with it in about two weeks. It would have been sooner if I hadn't done, been working on, um, working on other things, but I'm really happy with this. So there you go, you know, try something new every, every now and again, and you might be really, uh, might be really surprised. So very, very happy with this. Again, Felix pullover, and it is, um, it's great. I'm really, I'm super happy with how, how it turned out. All right, so let's move on to some works. I have a few of those too. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Kufel by Kate Davies. And this is a yoke sweater, like this one, <laughs> but this is a lighter um, yoke sweater. This is made out of fingering weight yarn. And I've been working on it for quite a while. This is, I think, if you watched a few of my previous episodes, this is a this is a sweater that I've started twice because the first time I made it, I think I made it much too large, and so I had to restart it again. But that's okay. And so I have, and then I had issues with the colors that I had ordered, etc. So, but all is well, <laughs> all is well. So I'm using a cone of Jameson and Smith. I love these. Look at how much yarn is on here. This is like, I don't know, like. 50 balls of, of yarn. <laughs> it's crazy. And, um, you know, it's on a cone. And so you can just put the cone right on the, right on the ground and wind it off. So I really, I really like doing this for the background color in the large sweater. This is the second time I've worked with a cone like this. And I, I'm really, I really find it to be very, very fun. And, uh, yeah, and it's, the, these cones, they will still have some of the spinning oil on them. And so after you finish it, the the project even will bloom even even more and get even softer than it than it already is. So this is from Shetland. So here's the here's my progress. I'll, I'll try to put a picture of the actual up here. So you can see that these are the same colors that I used here, but they look very different in this in this one. I think the only color I did not use was the yellow. So that gives it a different pop and a different feel than this, and no black in this one either, but basically the same color, so very, very different, different outcomes. So I really like, this is really a super pretty, pretty. So the, again, this is a bottom up, and it will be in a yoke, and the yoke is this beautiful patterning in it, but I have a ways to go because I'm, you know, I only have this much here. So this is, right now I'm just knitting in the round and knitting, knitting, knitting. So this is, you know, if I have a TV show on or a movie, and want to whip through these. It goes actually pretty fast. I'm always surprised. And the only reason I'm not farther is just because I've been splitting up my time. But I, I was surprised when I did another sweater, the, my other, um, the other sweater of, of Kate Davies that I did, did uh, last year. And it does go surprisingly quickly when you are just doing knitting in the round like this. And you think, oh, this yarn is so thin. It's just, there's no way that I'm ever going to get this done. And it goes surprisingly, surprisingly fast. So don't let that intimidate you if you're interested in doing a, a sweater that has, that's in fingering weight, but um, has a lot of stock in it because it just, it just goes all of a sudden you've done three inches and you're like, whoa, how did that happen? <laughs> um, and I am, <clears throat> I'm able to do, um, I, I don't have to look at my knitting when I'm doing this, not when I'm doing stock in it. So, so that works really well too. So I can, I can uh, like all of a sudden I'll be like, wow, how much have I done? And I can look down and, and, uh, and actually take a look at it. But this is beautiful. It will continue. I'll continue to work on this. I'll probably, um, you know, this will be done sometime this summer. And then it'll be all ready for the fall. That's my plan on this on this sweater. But it's really beautiful. I'm really having a happy, um, a really good time with, with this, even though it is just knitting in the round. Because sometimes you just need that, you know. 
you just need to be able to sit down and, and knit. And this is a perfect, perfect project for um, for that. Let me put it back in the bag here so it doesn't <clears throat> doesn't get a mess all over. The cat has now left the room, so we don't have to worry about her. Not that she bothers too much with the with the yarn. Um, the second project is is really is really fun. I started watching the uh, Knit My Way Home podcast. They have a couple of episodes out, and it's a mom and a daughter. So it's Loretta and um, a Natalia, <clears throat> and they live up in the Yukon Territory. So they're way, way up, way up north in the cold. I think they still have they still have feet of snow up uh, up there at this point in time. But they just started uh, a podcast together, and it's just really, it's really cute. They're, they've been recording outside, and Natalia's a beautiful knitter. She's learning how to do things, so she's kind of branching out and doing some more creative uh, pieces of knitting. She's done hats, and she's now she's doing this um, shawl that I'm going to talk about. So they are doing right now a knit-along that started in, um, on the spring solstice, so the first day of spring, and then it's going to go through the... Um, through the first day of, of, um, of summer. So we have a little while to do that. I don't know if I'll finish it by then, but that's okay. I'm happy to, happy to participate um, in it, and it's really lovely. It's called the Kairuna Shawl, and it's by uh, Ronya Hakalcho. I'm not saying that right, but um, I'll put a picture of it up, uh, up here and link in the, link in the, in the notes down, down below. And let me show you. And if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a picture of this earlier. And I had to do some changing because that's what happens when you are a knitter. So here we are <laughs> right now. So if you've seen this picture, these pictures, my pictures of this on Instagram, you might say, hmm, that looks a little bit smaller, Lisa, than what you showed. And it is. It is. Because here's the other piece. Here's the bigger piece right here. But again, not a, not a problem. And so what I did, this basically, as you can see here on, on this piece, this is a uh, shawl that starts at the top here, and then it, it uh, grows out from the middle. And you're, you're increasing stitches on either end and next to the spine on every other row so that it will eventually get fairly large. And then there's a lovely piece of lace at the, at the, bottom, of the bottom of the shawl. And what I discovered, again, just because I wasn't paying attention, no fault of the pattern whatsoever, all of a sudden it just hit me and I was like, oh my goodness. What I realized was that I was doing the increases on every single row. And what happens then is that you have, your, it's, it's just too, um, it's happening too fast. So all of a sudden I have hundreds of stitches on, and I, on the needles and I don't have a lot of heft yet. I don't have a big enough uh, piece of, of fabric. So what I decided to do is like, you know, I'm just going to start it again. Just going to start it again. It's just knitting. Just going to start it over again. Because uh, there's really no way to, to, um, to fix that. And I just wouldn't be happy. It would just be this small little piece. <laughs> I wouldn't, would not be happy. And I am using uh, Nutiden unspun yarn. So this is the beautiful Nutiden yarn from, uh, from Sweden, which I really, I really love. And I have a couple of um, I have a couple of cakes of, of this, so I have plenty to do. And I am mixing it with this lace weight. So this is the same lace weight that I used on the on this sweater here. And I should this is I should have it doesn't look like I have a lot here, but there's there's quite a there's quite a bit there's quite a bit here. And if for some reason I run out uh, for the body of the shawl, I have some other options that I could potentially do for the um, for the lace part of the shawl. So I'm not worried about that. So just taking the Nutiden yarn, just remember this is unspun yarn, so it's it's I, I want to it's fragile, but it's not fragile. It is uh, it it basically there isn't any twist to it, so it pulls apart easily. And using knitting together with the lace weight just gives it a little more heft while you're actually while you're knitting it. So it makes it a little easier to knit. You don't have to feel like you need to be quite as delicate with it. You can. Um, you know, not, you're not going to be pulling on it very hard anyway, but uh, it won't, it doesn't come apart as much as if you potentially, potentially could if you were just knitting it on your, um, on your, on your own. Um, the benefit of this is that it's very, very lofty, so it's very airy and um, it's going to trap, it'll trap the air, so it's perfect, perfect for, for, um, for a shawl. So I just started again and I am, I am re remembering to clearly only do the increases on the the right side. 
So I've been successful so far at doing that. And it really is not a problem because basically what will end up happening is, I'm not doing it right now, but I will eventually, at some point, I will just basically um, start knitting from this piece. <clears throat> so because they're, it's together, so I'll just pull it pull it gently um, off. I don't want to, I don't want to undo the whole thing because that's when then that's when the new teed and yarn could potentially come apart. But if I'm just very gently, you know, pulling it, um, to, to, um, apart from the, the pre-knitted piece, and then I will be able to, to do it that way. So I will once, I just wanted to get it started again. So once I will, I will very shortly probably do that and start and then just knit from all this. So I'm not going to lose any of this whatsoever. It's just the time and the knitting time is, is just enjoyable time, so that really doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter. I I'm totally a process knitter, so I'm just I'm in it for for the the actual knitting, and it's almost like a bonus when you have something that you can actually wear when you're done with uh, with the with the really enjoyable part. So so for me, this is really happy. It makes does not make does not make me at all unhappy that I have restarted it. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be just be beautiful, and it will be just really warm and squishy for the for the fall. So again, this is the Karuna shawl, and it is uh, the Knit Along with um, Knit My Way Home podcast. Okay, so I think I'm just going to like put this all together and, and move it <laughs> and put it back in the bag later. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let's see, what else am I doing? Oh, so, and th there's a theme here because the same exact thing has happened on this next project. <laughs> Not quite the same, but a similar and along the similar vein. So I have a friend of mine who is um, who is <clears throat> in the process of um, well, they're planning to start a family. So I know that ahead of time. So uh, she is not pregnant yet, but I'm hope you know hopefully fingers crossed that will it will happen. So I decided that I wanted to make her a uh, bits and bobs blanket for uh, a potential baby. So I obviously don't have any uh, colors. Um, particularly in mind, but I went to um, Marblehead Knits, my local uh, knitting shop down around the corner here, and a couple of weekends ago, and I uh, wanted to take a look and see what she had for baby knits, and she had this really beautiful yarn. Oh my gosh, it's so soft and beautiful, and it is, it, the first one is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, and it is Bo Peep DK. It is beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's so soft. It's so soft. It does have nylon in it. It's 52% Falkland wool and 48% nylon. And then the second one I wanted to put with it was the Plymouth Yarn Dream Baby DK. So this is this yarn. And look at these colors. Aren't they great? They're just really sunny and happy and beautiful. And so I got four, I got two of each of these because the bits and bobs you do with two held, two held together. And um, I probably will have to get more. I don't know. I don't remember how much of this she had. So, but the colors that she had, they're very complimentary. So, if she doesn't have any more of this, I'm just going to get some other colors like this in this Plymouth, and then just kind of stripe it, stripe it up. That's not going to be a, not going to be a problem at all. My the problem with this was I <laughs> I didn't know how big to make it, and so I made it. I forget how many. I can't, the Bits and Bobs blanket is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, and I love it. You've seen, I've made this, it's designed to be made with fingering weight um, leftovers, so you can just pull them up and, and just knit through your, um, your mini skeins and then just change it up every time you go. This time I wanted to do the you know, the main background color of the white and then mix it with that, so you hold the, you hold the yarn double, and it has to, I think it has to be done on a on an um, uneven number, and which is fine, but I wasn't sure how big to make it, uh, and so I made it this big. <laughs> and then I got going with it, and I realized, you know, this is really too big. It's going to use up too much yarn, and I'm I'm going to, you know, I this would just be way this would be way too big. It'd be lovely, but it's going to be way 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 too too big for um, you know for a, a crib or a, a bassinet. So I really need to make it much smaller. So basically what I did is, so I uh, took it off the needles and decided to make it a smaller one. And here it is. This will be much, much better. Much, much, the more correct size. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just knitting from the older piece. <laughs> so I have it here. I'm just pulling it out and, and, and knitting, uh, knitting it up. And this will, this is just going to be the perfect size 
perfect for a baby, a newborn baby. It's just incredibly soft and it will be machine washable. So all will be well with this. And if I don't have enough of these, this color here, I'm just going to go back and, um, and get some other colors. She has a, a whole range and so I could stripe them up too. Um, and they all complement each other beautifully. So I'm very happy with this. I'm really, I think this will be really, really pretty. And it's just a nice project to work on. Again, you know, it would be a nice project to work on over, over the summer. And no rush because there's no baby yet. But hopefully there, uh, there will be fairly, fairly soon. So I'm pretty happy with that. My last project, of course, that I finished the, uh, the other socks that I showed you. I have to, to, um, I have to cast on another pair. And this pair, I um, treated myself and I got a beautiful skein of yarn from Leigh Francis, uh, Handmade Crafts and Fiber Art. Here's her card here. And this is, uh, it's called Autumn Fell Down and it is fingering weight, 100% merino. And it is just beautiful. Look at this. Beautiful colors here. Perfect. And I hemmed and hawed. I wasn't sure what pattern I was going to do. So I, I tried one and I wasn't happy with the way it was coming out with this particular yarn. And, you know, you need, just need to do that sometimes. Sometimes the yarn isn't, isn't, the yarn and the pattern aren't speaking well together. And, but what I did find is the Sockness Socks by Salapalooza Designs. And she, I've knit her designs before. They're beautiful. I've had this for a while and just haven't knit this pattern up. And here it is here. You can see it. And it is creating this lovely cable pattern on the side of the sock. So this one, whichever side this turns out to, to be, I when I do this the second sock, I do, just will do the patterning on the opposite side. So then you can wear the, the cable will be on the outside. And this just travels up the foot and then up, uh, up the leg of the sock as well. And it's really pretty. Um, you can see, I'll show you the lace through there. I'm not sure, but I'll, so it's really, it's just really very, very, very pretty. And I'll try to put a picture up here of well of the of the finished socks, but I'm really happy with these. This is beautiful, gorgeous yarn to to um to, to knit with. So again, this is just yeah, this is just lovely. I'm really happy that I, I splurged a little and got and, and got a special skein of yarn. Um, all right, so well, that's all I have on the needles, if you can believe it. That's all I have. So uh, let's move on to some podcast recommendation that I have. Uh, kind of a perfect time um, for for this recommendation. Uh, kind of all, all things kind of come come together sometimes. It is April now, and April is traditionally the time of year, the month of the year that we all get together at the Knit Local Retreat in um, Greenwich, New York. And it is <clears throat> it is usually the the weekend when they have the uh, the the Greenwich the farms open up and let you come and, and take a look at all of their new lambs and, and purchase things from them. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And uh, Sarah uh, Bauer, Sarah Pomegranate on Instagram, uh, she set up an, an actual weekend get-together around, uh, around this event. And we've been going for several years. And unfortunately with COVID, we had to, it had to be canceled last year and it obviously isn't happening this year either. So it's very sad. But we can look back and, and, and remember all the good times, and we will, uh, I'm sure, next year uh, get back to it. Um, so I can just look forward to just look forward to that. But so it all kind of comes together because I've, uh, Sarah has a, a podcast, an audio podcast ca called Yarns at Yinhu, and I have been listening to her for years and years and years before I met her. I have been listening to her, and this at this period in time. Um, her podcast is great anyway. I always recommend it. She she does all kinds of great knitting things, and she does um, just a, different crafting things, and she does uh, cooking things, and it really is just a lovely uh, a lovely audio podcast to to listen to. But recently, she's been doing a special series, and it is a series with uh, Dr. Lily Marsh. <clears throat> she's been interviewing her because Dr. Marsh did her PhD dissertation on Elizabeth Zimmerman. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Elizabeth Zimmerman, um, some of you may be, some of you may not. I actually didn't, never heard of Elizabeth Zimmerman until after she died, and I think it, that was back in 1999. We had just recently moved to Florida at that time, and I had come back to knitting, but it was just the really, the very beginning of kind of knitting 
the online knitting groups. Um, I remember there were a couple of knitting forums. I think one of the knitting magazines had a knitting forum. And it was from a knitting magazine that I saw that I think the cover of it was on Elizabeth Zimmerman. And it, had, it was a whole, it was a whole article about her, about her life. And I had, I'd never heard of her before. And so that kind of piqued my interest. And, you know, as I said, it was just at the very, very beginning of, of kind of knitting forms and online things. And so people would, you know, have been talking about her more and more. And I was like, you know, I need to, I need to look into this more. And so um, Elizabeth Zimmerman was a, a crazy good knitter, but she, she was um, knitting in the, um, in the 50s and the 60s and then into the, into the 70s. And she did some amazing things for knitters in America. She really just kind of uh, crashed open the, the, um, uh, uh, any of the restrictions that were on knitting, I think, back in those, back in those days. And probably when my, grandma, grandma, my grandmother was knitting, um, people knit in pieces. So they knit a sweater in pieces. They knit the arms, they knit the front, they knit the back, and they sewed everything together. And, um, you know, Elizabeth Zimmerman was one of the first people to say, no, just let's let's knit it in the let's knit it in the round <clears throat> I'm sure my grandmother um you know because I have her old knitting materials she had double pointed needles that she used for knitting socks but every sweater she ever knit she knit on straight needles so she would do she definitely pieced things together um and you know it was kind of like this like eye-opening thing uh, like you're like wow I never never realized that now I kind of came in on the on the in the general knitting community, when I first started knitting, and the, the patterns that I was looking at too were, were kind of pieced together, and I remember doing several of those, and I really didn't like it. And and so when I fir first came across a, a circular one, I was like, I'm going to try this. And I remember when, you know, when I had to purchase a, a little booklet on how to do magic loop, which was just like totally mind blowing. So, but Elizabeth Zimmerman did things like that earlier on for for the knitting knitting community, and she has some. There's some marvelous. There's some marvelous, marvelous um, resources. You know, I have three of her books here. I certainly have, I have Knitting Without Tears, which is, I think, her most famous, famous book. And I have, uh, she put out a series of <laughs> mimeographed, I don't even remember how to do that, um, newsletters but from 1958 until 1968. And they have been put together now in a book called The Opinionated Knitter. And so you can actually look at the you know, they're copies of, um, let's see, so we have, she has, they have copies of the old um, newsletters right, right here, and you can look at them, there's hand drawings, and then there are all the different, the diff there's, there's so many, there's so many of them here, they're so cool, and then they have pictures of, pictures of her, of course, and pictures of the, of the pattern, she's a big fan of garter stitch, uh, she did the baby surprise jacket, amazing, Amazing, amazing. And I know Sarah's knitting a baby surprise jacket now, too. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the Knitter's Almanac. And this is this is great. This is, this is um, uh, projects for each month of the year. So she has projects for each month of the year. But really, the projects are nice, but the, the, the beauty of this is that they're essays by her. And she really just writes about her life. And um, she gives you what are called pithy directions. For, uh, for these projects. So she does not hold your hand through it. She is making the assumption, assumption that you know some basic things about, about knitting when you're doing them, but they're just, it's just wonderful to, to read through and, and, and you know, see what, what she was doing when she was designing um, some of these projects. And there are still things to, to learn. I mean, I pulled this out the other day. I was looking at it it's one of those, you know, it's on the shelf, and I pull. You can, I've used this. You can see it's well, well, well loved. Um, and I just was looking in the back, and there are just some the appendix um, items, and there are just some tips and tricks in there. And there was a trick in here for doing a 15-inch thumb on a on a um, on a mitten. And I, again, I'm reading. I'm like, why? How come I never thought about that? Why didn't I never look at this when I went to do a pair of a pair of mittens. I don't do a lot of mittens. That's probably, and it's why, because I, I don't like doing the thumbs. So now, next time I find a mitten pattern that I really want to do, I'm going to pull this back out, but full of great inf information. And she was just a really um, an interesting, interesting woman, really combining domesticity and combining working and dealing with her family and knitting and creating and 
all of those all of those things that were very unusual for um, for that time. So anyway. Sarah right now is doing this series, and it is fascinating to listen um, to to Dr. Marsh because she's really been dug into all of Elizabeth Zimmerman's um, private papers. Uh, she was she gained access to them from her family, and it's really just uh, amazing. Um, yeah, it's just it's really an amazing, amazing um, series, and so I highly recommend that you um, that you go and and look at it. And I also will give a, a link because. Uh, down at the bottom to um, to Schoolhouse Press. That's what she started. Elizabeth Simmons started that, and um, her daughter Meg Swanson is still carrying that on. The family is still doing that. So they put out a they put out a, a kind of a newsletter um, type every quarter, um, and uh, then if you get that, you get a um, a beautiful pattern along with it. And her daughter Meg Swanson is an incred- also an incredible knitter, does incredible lace work, incredible color work. So she is a she is also a treasure. Um, in the in the in the knitting community, and um, yes, yeah, so I'll put the link to that down there as well, and you can take a look at at Schoolhouse Press. They also have a lot of books that maybe you can't get a hold of in a regular knitting store, and they um, they're able to to import um, a lot of those really special uh, books, maybe on Nor- Norwegian knitting and lace knitting and things like that. So it's definitely worth a worth a look. I, I highly recommend Schoolhouse Press. But if you have a chance, Yarns at Yinhu, she's doing a fantastic fantastic series um, right now. All right, let's move on to some chatter. What has been happening here? Well, the best news is that Mark and I received our first vaccinations. Whew, yes, I'm really excited about that. Uh, we go back in two, two weeks to get our second shot. We're getting the Pfizer, the Pfizer ones. Um, we finally, they finally have the 60 and above uh, come into um come into eligibility here in Massachusetts. It's been very confusing. I think I spoke about this the last time, but it's been very confusing in every state, I'm sure, in um, in, in the country just because um, they're they're trying to they're trying to balance opening it up to those who need it and the amount of vaccines that are actually coming into the into the state. So we finally uh, were able to get an appointment um, through our uh, doctor's office. They weren't giving them out to to the medical offices at first, but now they've begun to do that. So we were able to go to one of the local clinics and and um, and get it there. Great, easy process. I had no side effects other than maybe a tiny bit of uh, um, soreness in the arm. I also got several weeks ago. I was able to get a hold of a shingles shot. So shingles shot is to prevent shingles. If you've had chickenpox as a child, you you have that that that. Um, that virus in your body and it just circulates and when you're under when you're older and perhaps under times of stress you can um, develop shingles which is very very uh, it's very different than the chicken pox but it's very very painful it's almost a nerve disease but it pops out in um, uh, mostly kind of around the trunk area of you and it's it's extremely painful mark has has unfortunately had had a couple of bouts with it. His brother has had a really bad bout with it. My brother has had a really bad bout with it. So, uh, and the shingle shot for some reason is it's, I, I don't think the, um, the supply is as good as it, as it should be. So you kind of have to sign up. And, um, I was, you know, I was able to, to, I got a call from our local CVS and said, come on down and get the shingle shot. That one, I, I had some, I did not have good experience with that. I mean, it wasn't really bad, but I just, I felt achy and, tired and just kind of overall sick with it. And I did not feel any of that with um, the COVID vaccine. So that was good. They do say that the second shot, you will, you can potentially feel more um, side effects because that means your body has been working to, to develop the antibodies for it and will recognize it as something to attack when it, when you get the second um, shot. So, but that's in a couple of weeks. So we'll see how we, we sell, we'll see, we will see how we do with that. My in-laws have both been fully vaccinated, and they didn't have any. Uh, they had no side effects whatsoever, and they also had the had the Pfizer vaccine. So I'm really, I'm super happy, um, super happy with them with that. Um, unfortunately, my mother-in-law right now is very, 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 very sick. She every year. I know I've said this before because it happens every year. Every year she gets pneumonia, and we were really hoping that this year, because they haven't gone anywhere, that she would she would not get that and she developed it once again. And I think this time is the worst she's ever had it. And she had it bad last year and they drove, actually drove to Florida when she was still sick, um, last year. And, you know, she's 89 and 
she's very, very independent, and they're very, very active. They're both, you would never know that they were, they were close to uh, 90 years old. And, but this just, it just drags her down. And she was so bad this week that she ended up going into, um, into the hospital here. And they kept her for a couple of nights, and she came home yesterday. And we went over to see her. She's sick again. She's, she really, I, I think that they should not have let her out of the hospital yesterday. She may potentially go back today. Um, she's just very, very sick. It's such a, such a hard thing for her and she's just prone to it and she's just very tired and, oh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, we're worried about, um, about her. Um, of course, when they, she went into the hospital, she had to go by herself into the emergency room because, because of COVID and my father-in-law had, couldn't even come, come in with her. And then of course there's all the things where, you know, she forgot her cell phone charger, so her cell phone, we couldn't, nobody could get a hold of her, <laughs> you know, the usual the usual kind of crazy things that that um, that go on with um, with that, but because she walked into the hospital presenting with a high fever, having hard a hard time breathing, you know she she was having headaches. She she um, has congestion, so of course they had to treat her as if she was a COVID patient. So they had to, you know, she had to go one area, and they did a they did a test a first test. And then they ended up doing a second test on her, um, but luckily both came back negative. So, um, but it just, it's so frightening because it just shows you, I, I, I can't even imagine had she gotten COVID, she would not have survived. She just would not have survived. She's struggling so much with just regular pneumonia. And if, 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 if she had gotten the COVID, so um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on that, but it's just, it's so frightening. And I'm just so, I mean, everything that we've done up till now is so worth it when you see someone and how potentially sick they can, they can be. And we will continue to wear our masks and we will, you know, continue and continue to wash our hands and, and, and really not go out and see, you know, see too many people, um, and just continue it on because we just, we really need to seriously fight this do everything that we can to to fight this um, this this disease. Um, so hopefully she'll be she'll get the you know hopefully she she may end up even going back to the hospital um, today. So we'll we'll see. But um, yeah. So so that's so that's that. We have found out from school that uh, will be school will be um, will be in person one hundred percent in the fall. So they are semi in person for the summer. And we are not there. There's only we. There's only one person covering the enrollment service center where I, where I work, and uh, each week, or two people I should say. And um, so we will not be fully back until uh, till fall semester. But we will be going back. So at the end of August, I'll be going back to work in Boston. I'll be fully vaccinated by then, so I'll feel pretty good about pretty good about that. Um, but we still will be doing um, a split shift. So I think I probably will do. I will be doing three days in the office and two days at home. So that will be nice. I was doing one day at home and four days in the office before. So we're going to split it up that, um, that way, because I think, I think there will still be limitations on the number of people that you can have in a, in a, in an enclosed space, even by that time. So that will be good, but that that's, it's time. It's time. It's just as everyone knows, it's very difficult. It's been very difficult and very stressful working, working at home for many, um, for many different um, reasons. And, you know, we've had a lot of changes at my institution in, in um, the way things are done and the people that have, uh, have left and have the new hires have, have there've just been a lot of, a lot of changes that we've had to, we've had to deal with and all, all good ones are not, not, not bad ones, but it has definitely being virtual has made it more difficult. Um, it looks like the trip to Egypt is, is on. So uh, Sophia is going to go to, she has to go to a wedding because she's a maid of honor for her best friend. And that's in Virginia. She's going to go down later this week. And there's only 10 people. Again, it's going to be a COVID wedding. So only the, the wedding party will only be 10 people, including the bride and the groom. So she'll be down there for a couple of days. And then she'll just isolate again when she comes back up um, up here. By the time she gets back, we, we will be, uh, we should be, um, will be vaccinated uh, that weekend as well. So that will be good. And, um, yeah, so, but, but, uh, it looks like the trip to Egypt will be back on as, is on as well. Um, they've been getting us our internal, uh, internal flights in Egypt. We have to, <clears throat> we have one day where we, we fly from one place to the other inside Egypt. So, 
Um, but Egypt, their, um, you know, their, their COVID uh, has been very low, which is really great. And I think they've had a lot of experience there with the, um, the SARS, um, one of the avian flus. They had a really bad time with that several years back. And so I think they've been pretty, pretty good with, uh, with it. So I think it'll be even better in July. There still aren't going to be a lot of tourists. There aren't a lot of tourists in Egypt in the summer anyway because it's so hot, so there'll be even less when we're there. So I think we, I think we'll, we will be good, and I'll be fully vaccinated by um, by that time. So that will be that will be exciting. It's it's like almost like starting to think about it being real. But when Sophia gets back from her her trip, what we have to do next will be to we need to go and get the uh, enhanced um, TSA. Uh, uh, international, I forget what it's called, Global Select or something like that. So you can go and get pre-checked out by the TSA so that you can uh, travel internationally easier. It's easier to come back through into the country through customs if you have this special um, special uh, thing on your um, on your passport. So we're going to take care of that, and then we also discovered that there is actually a clinic specifically designed for international travelers in Boston. So because, you know, we've asked our doctor and she's kind of like, well, I don't know, you need to get me a list of what vaccinations you might need. I have no idea what you need to go to Egypt. So we're like, okay, that was helpful. But there is this clinic in Boston where you can go and make an, an appointment and they will talk. You can go in two, so we'll go in together. And um, they will walk you through exactly what you need for where you're going. And they can provide you with those, the shots or the vaccines or anything that you might need right there. So that is awesome. The benefits of living near a big city. Um, sometimes. So that's good. So that's the other thing we need to make an appointment for. I have no idea what we, what we need, but we probably are going to need several, um, several things to, to go there. So we can, if we can get that done, um, the end of April into, into May, get both of those. And then we'll, we'll be, we'll be set to, we'll be set to go. I already have my days off for it. Um, so that's all set as well. So that will be, that will be nice. Um, we have to, we'll <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Mark is going to be in charge of the cat for the time that we're gone. Our poor, this poor cat. She's, she well, she's a kitten. She's still well. She's a little over a year, so but she's still she's still young. And because of COVID, you know, we've been home since we got her, since Sophia got her. So if Sophia goes even. Sophia even goes out of the house to go down the street to the store for something. The cat is just inconsolable. She's in the window and she's just meowing, meowing like she's been deserted forever. How how could how could my mother leave me? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I feel bad for the cat, but it's just it's so funny to hear her just yowling. And you know, she Sophia has gone to up to Burlington to visit her friends for a week at a time. So it did you know a few hours. The second day, the cat's fine. She's like, yeah, whatever. I, I, I'll I'll hang with you guys. <laughs> Somebody else is here. But it's just so sad to see her go. But she's going to have to get used to it because Sophia is actually going to go back to work in, starting in May. So she'll be going back into, into Boston in, in May. There are very, very few people in her office. So it will be one, two, three people, four people at the most. There's not a lot, but she will be going in each day. So we're just like, we've just been joking. Poor Mark, the cat is, I'm because I'm over at my in-laws. I probably, when that first time she goes back, I'll probably spend a couple of days here and work here. So the cat is so much to hang to hang out with but oh my goodness it's just so pitiful you just are like she's inconsolable <laughs> her mother has left has left her forever um so yeah so mark will have to deal with that when we're gone for for two and a half weeks to uh, uh to to egypt but um yeah that's kind of crazy um and the other thing that i've been also doing which is really nice i know you, i've spoken about her before but um uh um notography um at Notography Farm and uh, Patricia, she has been doing a series of a series of Zoom um, lectures by different designers. And so they've been Norwegian designers, and it's just been really fascinating. So it's really inexpensive. I think they've been five or six dollars, and you can go onto her website and sign up. And um, you know they've had hundreds of people on the Zoom call, and basically it's like on a Sunday afternoon. I think it's a Sunday evening in Norway, but it's Sunday afternoon here. And it's great. So she interviews or just lets them speak. They just do a lecture on, on different things. Um, there's one woman that owned a mill and she, she just was just had, she, um, took in old, uh, 
old pieces of knitwear and old mittens and things, and she saved them, and she made this whole history in a book of all of these beautiful Norwegian mittens. And, um, yeah, and we last week we had a, a, a young gentleman who's a fairly new designer but doing amazing, amazing things. Uh, and, yeah, it's just been so, so interesting to do, and it's just it's such a, it's a perfect thing during COVID <laughs> because you're getting to, you know, meet these people that you would – potentially never number one never heard of or number two never had an opportunity to meet in person and this is just great and it's just so so inexpensive so i'm going to put a link down at the bottom um she has another one coming up in um a maybe next week but she's been doing them on a regular basis so it's really just a lot of fun to 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 um to see if that's something that you might be that you might be interested in um pretty much everything else is kind of kind of copacetic Right now, um, Mark is practicing his chess and he is practicing his guitar. <laughs> we can get the great courses uh, through our local library digitally, so that's been really nice because I got him a course on playing the guitar. It's you know twelve lessons, twelve or thirteen lessons, so that's been really fun for for um, for him to do. And the weather is starting to turn. You can see the light in here is beautiful this morning. It's just beautiful and sunny. It's not too warm yet, but Last fall, we planted a ton of tulips, and boy, was that oh, that was that was not easy. I don't think we had quite the right tools to do it, but boy, that was not easy. But they're all coming up now, so within a week or so, they're just going to bloom, and I'm really I'm really pretty excited about that. And then we'll need to get to work, and we have a little rock garden area in the back, and it was just it looks it really it it, it looked the club can see it, and it really it needs work, and it it was a mess last year because we were having the house painted and the windows, and so the workmen were like always in there. We couldn't really keep anything nice. So this year we want to do a really nice um, a nice job with that. So we'll get into that um, in a couple of weeks as well. So I'm looking forward to um, looking forward to that. I need to find some good plants that <laughs> take that direct afternoon sun because that's what we that's on the that's what we get here on the on this side. It gets pretty warm um, in the afternoon uh, there. But um, but yeah. So I am. Um, yep. I'm just. I'm looking forward to being able to sit outside in the in the sun. I've been walking again, which is wonderful. I'm wonderful. I've really been walking at least in the morning, if not in the in the afternoon, trying to do the art. Like I said, I really want to I want to get into better shape for uh, for going to Egypt because we're going to be doing a lot of uh, you know a lot of walking, and I want to I want to make sure that I'm in the best shape for that that I can be, and uh, we will be now that we're getting those um, getting the, the second vaccine. Um, like I can't even tell you the. The feeling of relief that came off of uh, my shoulders when we got the first one, and we have the we have um, the appointment for the second, so that will be that will be really great. Um, hopefully, I won't have too, too many bad side effects, but whatever it is, it is, and I will I will take it. I will be happy with that. So, all right, everyone, don't forget if you are interested in receiving a uh, uh, potentially winning a copy of that beautiful sock pattern. Um, make a note down here um, underneath a uh, comment, and um, I'll be pulling that the next time. And remember, it's just knitting. Bye.